Among the Hidden, Chapter 16. Want any more potatoes, Luke? Mother offered that night at supper. Luke? Her voice got more insistent. Luke? Luke jerked his attention back to his family. Mother was holding the bowl of mashed potatoes out to him. Er, no, Luke said. No thanks, I've still got some. More for me, Mark crowed. Luke turned, tuned them out again. He had barely eaten his first serving of potatoes. He had been so busy thinking about his secret visit to the sports family house. He, could just, he couldn't believe he dared to go. Just the thought of his run through their yard made his heart beat fast, remembering fear and pride. He'd really done it. And then meeting Jen was amazing. There was no other word for it. <clears throat> he was so overwhelmed with wonder at everything he had seen at her house, everything she told him, that he started to say, did you know that Jen, at the last minute, he clamped his teeth shut, holding the words in. He thought he'd burst. He could feel his face flush red with the effort of keeping still. He bent his head low over his plate so nobody else could see. <clears throat> How could he ever manage to keep Jen secret? But he had to, because if he told, they'd forbid him to go back. And he had to go back. We'll set up a signal, Jen said. Something I can see, but you don't have vents to look out like I do, Luke protested. You can't look out the windows. Oh, when the mirrors work, it's not a problem. Look. She took him over to a window near the sliding glass door and showed him a mirror that reflected a wide view of the Talbot's backyard and the landscape beyond. It showed just the corner of the Garner's barn, but when Jen turned it a bit, the entire Garner house came into view. Luke wondered if his parents could set up the same kind of system. Then he looked at the mirror again and decided it might be expensive. And anyway, how he, would he explain what he, where he'd gotten the idea? So let's see, Jen said, a signal. I've got it. How about if I look out every morning at nine, and if you come, can come over, you shine a flashlight at me. I'll shine one back if everything's safe. <clears throat> we don't have any flashlights, Luke said. Not that work, I mean. Jen frowned. Why not? We haven't had any batteries in, I don't know, four or five years, Luke explained. In fact, he felt proud even to remember what a flashlight was. Okay, okay, Jen said. No flashlight, no computer. Oh, we have a computer, Luke said. My parents do, and I think it still works. But it's in Dad's office in the front of the house, and I'm not allowed in there. And anyhow, I'd never be allowed to touch the computer. He remembered once when he was very young, maybe three or four, and he followed Mother into Dad's office while she was cleaning. The rows of letters on the computer keyboard had looked like a toy to him. And he reached one finger up and tapped the space bar over and over again. Mother had turned around and freaked out. They can find you now, she screamed. If they were watching... And for weeks after that, she'd hidden him even more carefully than ever, locking him in his room when she had to go outside. Jen rolled his eyes. Jen rolled her eyes. <clears throat> Don't tell me your family believes that government propaganda stuff, she said. They've spent so much money trying to convince people that they monitor all the TVs and computers. You know they can't afford to actually do it. I've been using our computer since I was three and watching TV, too and they've never caught me. How about a candle? What? It took Luke a minute to realize she was talking about the signal again. The candles, they're all in the kitchen, and I'm not allowed, Jen mimicked the words as he said them, to go in there. They've got you on an awfully short leash, don't they? She asked. No, I mean, yes, but they're just trying to protect me. Jen shook her head. Yeah, I've heard that one. Ever hear of disobeying? <clears throat> I, Luke started defensively. I'm here, aren't I? <clears throat> Jen laughed. Got me. But listen, if you can't do candles or flashlights, how about just turning on a light that I can see? Luke was quicker this time figuring out that she was still talking about the signal. The one by the back door, Luke said. You can't miss it. He wasn't allowed to turn that on either, but he didn't say, dare say not allowed again. Now Luke toyed with his mashed potatoes. His entire conversation with Jen had been like that. She mocked, he defended, but she always got her way. Of course, he defended her to himself. She knew and had seen so much more than he, than him. And after he'd finished his story on the couch, she'd told him hers. First, she said defiantly, my parents had me on purpose. 
13 years ago, mom already had Bull and Broad from her first marriage. <clears throat> Your brothers, Luke asked. Yeah, Buellton and Brownlee, really, but what kind of names are those for knuckleheads like them? Mom was going through some snobbish upper class phase with husband number one. <clears throat> she had more than one husband, Luke asked. He didn't know that was possible. Sure, Jen said. Dad, who's really my stepdad, is number three. Luke found that so confusing, but he just kept his mouth shut. Anyhow, Jen said, Mom was dying to have a little girl, so when she and husband number two got together, she went and paid some doctor lots of money so she could get pregnant. What if you'd been a boy? Luke asked. Oh, they got in on the beginning of the gender selection experiments. Luke must have given Jen a particularly blank look because she explained it. That means they made sure I was a girl. Doctors can do that, you know, but the government outlawed the procedure because they were afraid it'd throw the population even more out of whack. I'm sure my parents paid a lot for it. Were your mom and dad trying for a girl? Luke thought about it. He remembered mother saying she wanted four boys, but, she, but would she have wanted a girl even more? Someone like mother? He couldn't really picture a girl in his house. They weren't trying for anything, he said. I was a surprise. Luck. Jen nodded. I didn't think they paid for you, she said. Then she put her hand over her mouth. That sounded really terrible, didn't it? I didn't mean anything by it. It's just, you're the first person I met who wasn't a baron. How do you know I'm not? Luke asked stiffly. Well, Jen waved her hand in a way that made Luke even more aware of the contrast between his ragged flannel shirt and patched jeans and Jen's perfect house. Look, don't be mad. Doesn't matter. Or maybe it does, but I think it's cool that you're not a baron. You can help me even more. Help? Luke asked. With the rally, Jen said. She, built, she bit her lip. Should I? There's no way you could be an infiltrator, is there? Can I trust you? Of course you can, Luke said. He felt insulted again. Jen leaned her head back and stared at the ceiling as if an answer were written there. Then she looked back at Luke. I'm sorry, I'm botching this. I'm not used to really talking just on the net. <clears throat> Look, I trust you, but I'm not the only one involved, so let's wait, okay? Okay, Luke said, but he couldn't help sounding injured. Jen leaned over and gave his shoulders a quick shake. Oh, don't say it like that. Say, okay, Jen, I respect your judgment, or okay, Jen, whatever you think is best, she giggled. That's what dad tells me I should say when I disagree with him. Can you believe it? Lawyers. Luke was glad the subject was changed. Your dad's a lawyer, he asked. Jen rolled her eyes. Yeah, all mom's husbands have been. Strange taste, huh? Number one was an environmental lawyer, of all things. Number two was corporate. That's how they had enough money to get me. And number three, dad is with the government. High up, I might add. But if you're an illegal, Luke hadn't thought he could get any more confused. Jen laughed. Haven't you learned? Government leaders are the worst ones for breaking laws. How do you think we got this house? How do you think I got internet access? How do you think we live? I don't know, Luke said, fully honest. I don't think I know much of anything. Jen patted his head as if he were a little kid or a dog. That's okay, she said. You'll learn. It wasn't long after that that Luke said he had to leave because he was afraid Dad or Matthew or Mark might come in for lunch a little early. He dreaded the trip back. Jen walked into the screen door to the door, chattering the whole way. I'll fix the screen and deal with the security system so no one will ever know you were here, she said, and oh no. Luke followed her gaze. She was staring at three pinpoints of blood on the carpet. I'm sorry, Luke said. That must be from when I scraped my hand. I'll clean it up. There's still time. Secretly, he was glad of the delay. No, no, Jen said impatiently. I don't care about the carpet. It's just that mom and dad will know, and when they see I don't have any cuts, and then Luke didn't even know what she was doing, she thrust her hand toward the torn part of the screen. The jagged edge didn't the jagged edge didn't cut immediately, so she held the screen with her right hand and raked it across her left. When Jen pulled her hand back, Luke saw a gash even deeper than his. Luke, Jen squeezed a few drops of blood and let them fall to the carpet. There, she said. Stunned, Luke backed out the door. 
Come back soon, farmer boy, Jen said. Luke turned and ran, blindly, not even slowing down to creep alongside the barn. He went straight to the back door of his house, yanked it open, and let it bang shut behind him. Now, sitting at supper, he felt his head pounding, his heart pounding again as he thought of how dangerous that had been. Why hadn't he looked for it first? Why hadn't he crawled? He poked his fork into his potato, potatoes, now gone cold and congealed. He watched Mother gathering up dirty dishes while Dad, Matthew, and Mark leaned back in their chairs, talking of grain yields. Jen, was, Jen had scared him. That was why. Seeing her cut her hand had terrified him. How could she do something like that for him when they just met?